and welcome to the School Management Plus series on Talking Recruitment, Episode 5, with Mark Steed and me, Kai Basher. Many schools in the UK and around the world will be welcoming new colleagues to their school this month. So what we thought we'd discuss today is what does a good induction program look like? Mark, what does a good in induction program look like? Well, I think first and foremost, it's got to be about getting to know people. I, I think the danger here is that everyone sort of focuses on processes and learning how to do all sorts of things, which of course you have to do. But really, the most important thing is if you're going to feel at home in the new school or your new colleagues are going to feel at home in, in your school, then it's got to focus on people. So I remember Mark Lepard at you know, BSAC sort of last year or so wrote a really lovely piece about the fact that he'd cut some of the time down just so they could have more social events during the beginning of the year, just so that the staff could all get to know each other. And I think that that's really important. So I don't know, but obviously there are other things as well. And you'll be much better at those than me, Guy. Well, I'm not sure about that, Mark. Um, yeah, I think it is It is about people, certainly. Um, relationships play a big part in helping new staff forge those new relationships with their new colleagues and I guess with, with the new location that they're moving into. I mean, I think it's like a lot of things you know first impressions matter a lot so i do know quite a lot of schools you know think about this very carefully and so they make sure that there's a welcoming party at the airport when the the new staff arrive uh, and i think some schools are getting better and better at this you know they they wear branded t-shirts maybe like the one i'm wearing at the moment they have banners you know so that the staff coming off maybe the the new staff coming off the night flight or whatever they they're tired they're jaded they're a bit scared they also might be a bit excited maybe they've got tired children with them but then they see they see some something familiar at the airport which that can be very reassuring i don't know mark did 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 you ever do the the welcoming party thing when you're in hong kong or dubai well, the welcoming party thing in Hong Kong was a different sort of thing. So I remember the, the only time I did it, it was when the Hong Kong protests were on. It was quite a lively event and quite a welcome for the thing. But no, I think these things are really important. And I think what, what this highlights is how different, I'm now I'm working back in the UK, it, it highlights how different the international schools do this and how well international schools do this. Because, of course, international schools have so much more involvement you know, they have a duty of care, a much greater duty of care. They're sponsoring visas. People are often moving halfway around the world to join their school. So they have to have really good processes in place. And I think schools in the UK could learn an enormous amount from the way in which international schools do induction um, because they, they're, they're, these processes are so refined and so well thought through internationally because there's so many more questions to answer. I mean, you know, I'm running Stanford School at the moment, but half the staff coming, our new staff, will not be moving house even to to join the school. So that makes quite a difference. So there's not that sort of, you know, sort of getting used to living in the new area piece, which we don't do as a school. We just assume people can sort themselves out, sort their housing out, and then turn up, uh, you know, for a an induction day. Whereas obviously internationally, you only, you'll have a lot more going on. So I mean, you're you, you're probably got uh, three or four days, haven't you, Kai? Um, we actually have a week uh, induction uh, for the for new staff. Actually, maybe it's even longer than that if you include the day that they arrive. But yeah, yeah. I mean, you're absolutely right. I think uh, the pastoral care of staff and the role that the leadership team and the school plays in the pastoral care of the staff is far more intense, certainly at the start of new teacher's journey, but also far more extensive once you move into an international setting. Um, and so I guess, as we know, we're in the middle of a, a global recruitment crisis. And I think what's also very important probably for, for every school is they, they've, they've probably spent a long time uh, invested a lot of time and energy and care in recruiting staff. And then if you've got new colleagues who arrive uh, in your country at your school, and then let's say you go and show them the accommodation they're going to be in, 
and they take one look of it, a look at it, and they say, "I'm out of here. I'm not. I'm not living there." And off they go back to the UK or wherever. And I have heard stories where that has happened. I mean, think of all the time you've then wasted your time, their time. Think then, then the problem you've got with maybe a couple of weeks before the start of term. So I think it, it is really important on a whole range of levels, whether we're talking about human relationships, you know, staff care, you know, making sure that your school starts the school year in a secure way, making sure that you invest time, energy, a lot of organisation and planning in making sure that those first few days are as comfortable, welcoming, reassuring, supportive for those new colleagues. I, I think it's definitely worth putting a lot of energy in. I know a lot of schools do do that. Um, no, absolutely. I, I think you know, it, there's, so, there's so much that you can, you can learn from, you know, from the, the way in which international schools do that. And, you know, and obviously there's no supply or backup for, you know, in, in international schools in quite the same way as there is in the UK. So, yeah, a very interesting, um, you know, lots of, lots of th good things and good practice to draw on. Um, and I think one of the issues which you raised in a recent podcast conversation with Alex Gray, Mark, was this, also this point, so, okay, the new staff are coming in and what can, what can we, we do for them to make them feel comfortable and reassured and make sure they have a smooth start? But I think you also raised the point that there's quite an interesting learning opportunity for the host school with all these new colleagues coming in. Uh, sometimes um, I think you will go into a new setting, you will see things which are different to what you've experienced. And new colleagues in any setting, you, you can be quite irritating if every other sentence you're saying, well, in my old school, we did it like this. And in my old school, we did it like this. But you, you had a slightly different take on that opportunity. Uh, do, you want, do you want to share that a little bit, Mark? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a great believer that um, this, is, this is really good free consultancy. Um, that, you, you know, we've appointed this highly talented group of people who are coming into our school from outside. Uh, we've gone through a big process of interviewing and recruitment, and they're bringing experience that we want to have in the school. And yet, as we go through in schools, you know, so often it's, it's easy to shut those people down and just say, no, this is, you know, uh, in my previous school, and it sort of becomes a bit boring. So what I do is, uh, you know, when I will do next week with, with our new staff is to say, well, look, Look, there will be lots of things you notice that are different about these schools. Some of them are really odd and some of them uh, aren't. But you know, just note them down. And um, what I tend to do is I, I, I meet the new staff about two or three weeks into term. And I ask them for their list and go through that. Because I, I think that it's quite possible that, the, you know, they may have done it better in their in their school. You know, not just differently, just there might be a loads of stuff we can improve. And it also gives us feedback on our induction process. So we, we might be sitting there thinking we're, we're absolutely amazing at this stuff. But in practice, there might be areas where we've dropped the ball or could do things better. So I think, you know, trying to tap into that expertise, tap mm. into those fresh pair of eyes, I think it's really important. But, yeah, I mean, nobody wants people going, you know, sort of, oh, it's better there, it's better there, it's all this. And, you know, Mike Lambert made a very interesting point around, you know, this idea of Chesterton's fence, the idea that, you know, you really shouldn't go around changing stuff until you understand why that fence is there. So, you know, the analogy is you come across a fence and you say, right, this is, why is this fence here? Um, I can't see any point for this. This fence is in my way. This way of doing things doesn't make sense to me. Um, but you shouldn't remove the fence until you understand why the fence was put there. So there is that sense of um, sort of learning and, you know, learning how the school does it, because there's often a rationale. Uh, it might be wrong. It might, the school might have sort of lost the plot, but, you know, but, uh, and the fence might need taking away. But you can't just go bulldozing in and saying that this has got to go. Yeah, so it is actually the induction process, the onboarding process. It's a great opportunity for the new colleagues to learn about their new school and their new environment, their new country. Uh, but it's also a great opportunity for the school 
to learn about what it looks like through different pairs of eyes. And, and that, like you say, that can certainly help you with your school improvement journey. And you know, that, old say, that old saying, you know, fresh pair of eyes um, is, is, is a great way to, to think about it. And certainly every year we get feedback on our induction process and you know, things which might have mattered uh, five or 10 years ago, maybe matter less now and you know preferences change i mean i can remember when i first came wi-fi wasn't much of an issue but within maybe five or six years of being of me being here getting access to wi-fi within like an hour of landing was like number one priority for quite a few new colleagues uh, and what we've also been on a journey with we used to uh select accommodation for our new colleagues and then i guess over a period of years we found that personal preferences we're becoming so diverse that we now uh, place our new colleagues in serviced accommodation, uh, which is very comfortable, it's very central, very accessible to the school. And then they have up to two months then to find their own accommodation rather than be locked into something the school has chosen for them for maybe a, a 12 month period. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, I think it's really good to, to learn from our processes and how they can be improved. But it's also really good to learn from the, the colleagues and what are they seeing as they come into our school, which maybe they won't see in six months time, maybe we're not seeing. And that fresh pair of eyes is a, is a really great opportunity. Okay, yeah. anything else there uh, on, the, on the onboarding process that we want to explore the, today? No, I think it's all, it's all about people. It's all about, you know, getting people feeling comfortable in the new school so that they're ready and fired up for that beginning of term. So a school can hit the ground running and oh. that everyone's on the same page. And induction is about getting all the newbies up to speed um, with everyone else and the speed that the school's going. So, yeah, very exciting period. I always, I always really enjoy the beginning of term. It's just such a buzz about you know how everyone's come back all the stories about what you've been doing over the summer and then and actually everyone's really ready to get stuck back in again so i'm really looking forward to it yeah it is it's a it's a very exciting time of the school year lots of new colleagues new students lots to look forward to and we all come back hopefully with a huge amount of energy with which to to start off the new term okay well we're going to leave it there for today but as ever, if you've got some interesting experiences about onboarding in your new school, wherever that might be in the world, the UK or around the world, then please let us know by sharing your experience on the comments in, on the LinkedIn post. And we look forward to our next episode of Talking Recruitment. Goodbye from me. And from me. Take care.